Drawing this animated camping scene is easier than you think and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it no matter your skill level. Hey hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools and let's get started. So as usual, we are going to start by creating a new canvas so we have somewhere to draw. And for reference, these are the dimensions of the canvas that I will be using, but make sure you pick something that works for your own project requirements. And if you're not exactly sure how to pick a canvas size, I have a video in which I explain everything you need to know in order to make your decision, so I will link it in the description below. Now just one little thing to know, when we are doing an animation like this, if we want to be able to export it and use it on social media platforms for example, you need to make sure that the size is less than 3000 by 3000 pixels and other than that everything should be fine. Now I always recommend you try and use your own colors because that's really good practice for when you want to create your own illustrations but I made this palette here that you can download it is free it will also be linked in the description below if you want to have the same color as I am going to be using. And we're going to start by setting the color of the background. I know right now it looks like it's white, but it's a very, 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 very bright blue that I actually forgot to add in the palette. So I'm just going to add it right now. It's going to be the palette or the, sorry, the color on the top right of the palette right here. So the one that you're going to be able to download is going to have the background color right there. So once you have your background color, we're actually going to go ahead and create the circle in which the illustration is going to be. And you can really use any kind of color palette you want. I'm gonna stay mostly in the blues as you can see and then having some sort of a super bright yellow tint. So for the circle, the color doesn't really matter because we're gonna be painting on it. I'm gonna go with this super, super, super dark blue. And in this video, I'm always going to be recommending two different brushes. One is going to be a free brush that comes with Procreate and it's going to allow you to follow along just fine. And the other brush is going to be a brush from my Ultimate Illustration Bundle, which will be linked in the description below. And there's always a special promo code for the YouTube people. Now these brushes, like I was saying, they're not essential, but they're gonna help you save some time and get more professional results overall. So for the circle, all we need is a brush that doesn't have any texture to it. So you can go in the airbrushing panel and picking the hard brush. And here you want to make sure that if you follow my watercolor videos, you bring the opacity of the brush back to 100%. Otherwise, don't, don't worry about that. If you have the illustration bundle, you're going to pick the base round brush. And we're simply going to create a new layer that we're going to rename to circle. Now to create a perfect circle in Procreate, all we have to do is roughly draw something that kind of resembles a circle, you know, like this. Then hold the pencil on the screen and then tap with a secondary finger, which is going to create a perfect circle. You can also resize the circle by dragging your pencil around. And once you're happy, just go ahead and fill in the shape by dragging the color into the outline. Now you need to make sure that the shape is exactly where you want it to be. So for that, you can activate in the arrow tool and the settings, the snapping option. And with the snapping, you're gonna get some guides. So you're gonna get yellow lines when your piece is centered. And you can also set your arrow tool to the uniform mode to resize your circle and really make sure that this shape is exactly how you want it to be. And once you're happy, we're going to start layering the different elements, which is going to be fairly easy. We're going to take them one by one and no big deal here. So we're going to start with the water and we're going to create a new layer and we're going to rename this layer to water. Now in this video, we're going to be using a lot of masks, mostly clipping mask and alpha lock in order for everything to stay within the base circle. So tap on the water layer and then from the menu select clipping mask. This is going to activate this little arrow here and now everything we draw on the water layer is going to stay within the circle. So for the water I'm going to go with a very very light blue. It's going to be the lightest blue of our illustration. And you can go with either the 6B pencil and the sketching panel, so a free brush, or if you have the illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the outlines brush. And here, all we want to do is draw a line towards the bottom part of the circle for the water. But now if we try to fill it in, it's actually going to fill in the entire canvas because this layer is the same size as the other layers. It doesn't stop at the circle, so you actually need to close your shape at the bottom as well, even though you don't see that part. 
And just a trick here, when you're trying to fill in a shape that was created with a brush that has some texture to it, you might need to adjust the threshold. So for that, just drag your pencil without lifting it from the screen towards the left, towards the right, towards the left, right until you find the moment right before the color fills the entire screen. And that's where you release and that's the right threshold. Now we're going to add a little bit of light in the sky to make the gradient that we see in the illustration at the top. So for that, go ahead and swipe your circle layers with two fingers towards the right, which is going to activate alpha lock. You can also manually activate it from the menu. Now alpha lock, what it's going to do is everything we draw on the circle layer is now going to stay within the circle shape that we had at the, well, that we created first. So with the same brush and same color, you're just going to roughly brush some pale blue towards the bottom like this and then we're going to use the smudge tool and I like to set my smudge tool to the stucco brush from the painting panel fairly big and then you can just kind of create a really rough gradient now the beauty of the smudge tool and this brush is you're still going to retain and actually create some texture in your gradient as opposed to having super smooth gradient I prefer having a little bit of grit but you could also just use um, the soft brush as your smudge tool so now we're going to go and add a little bit more texture on the water as well. So we're also going to activate alpha lock on the water by swapping the layer towards the right with two fingers. And that way what we draw on the water layer is now going to stay within the circle and also within the water layer. So we're going to select this dark dark blue here that we use for the base circle. Just draw a light or small little lines like this in the bottom. And then we're going to select a slightly lighter version of the blue, but still fairly dark to add a little bit more to our gradient. And then same thing, we're going to pick the smudge tool to blur everything together. Great, so we're going to add a little bit of a grass kind of situation. So for that, go ahead and create a new layer. This one is going to be between the circle and the water so that the waterfront can hide the grass line. So this layer is also going to be a clipping mask, but if you create it below or between, I should say, the circle and the water, it's automatically going to be a clipping mask. You can rename it to grass. And here for all the kind of nature elements, you're gonna pick the same kind of blue, so the same hue, just less saturation and quite, quite dark. So it's kind of gonna be a grayish black blue. <laughs> and here, all you have to do is draw a horizontal light slightly above the water and then close your shape so that you can fill it in by dropping your color onto it, adjusting the threshold as necessary. Awesome. So we're going to add the trees because right now this looks totally crazy. <laughs> so we're going to create a new layer. This one is going to be above the circle, but below the grass. So this layer also is going to be a clipping mask, but it should be automatically a clipping mask. And you're going to rename it to trees. And for now, we're going to stick with the same color. Later, we're going to add a little bit more light, but for now, just you know, use the same color as the grass. And I personally like to start with just roughly mapping out where the trees are going to be. So just drawing a bunch of vertical lines that have slightly different heights and slightly different angles. Then I like to map out where the branches are, so just drawing some inverted V shapes over the tree. Some trees can have super long branches, some trees can have very short and kind of tight branches, so make sure you have some variety. And also make sure that your trees, some have like four, some have three, some have five branches, so making sure that your trees are not all the same, basically, that's, that's where I'm heading towards. So here, take all the time you need, but this should not be a long step. Don't agonize over it. Just roughly map out where your trees are going to be. And once you have your V shapes roughly mapped out, you can just go in, zoom in maybe, and draw some extra little lines, I guess, to fill out the bottom part of the V shape, so the underside. Here, there's really no crazy rule. It's not super complicated, but as you can see, just adding a little bit more lines on the bottom of the v-shape that's all you need seriously i know drawing trees can be intimidating especially pine trees because it's like there's so many needles how do you begin drawing that just draw some simple shapes like this this is all we need we're just you know we just want shadows of trees so that's good enough for now 
And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this final video, please go ahead and comment forest. If you're new on the channel, you might be like, what's the deal with the secret password? We've been doing this for a few months and people seem to really, really like it. It gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which just helps me create better tutorials for you guys. And we all want that, right? Um, but the coolest thing about it is it allows us to see who's part of the creative community here on the channel, especially for me, because you guys know me, you see my face in the intro, you hear my voice throughout the entire video, but I have no idea who you guys are. And whenever you leave a comment, I get to see sometimes your name, sometimes your face, and it's just it's just so cool to see the creative community that we have here on the channel. So leave a comment with the word forest and then we're gonna keep going. We're going to add more trees. So for that, create a new layer between the circle and the trees layer. So again, a clipping mask. This one you can rename to background trees or more trees, whatever. <laughs> and we're gonna pick an even darker version of our grayish blue. So on the screen, honestly, you can't really see the difference. It's just super slight. If you download the color palette, you can see it's like almost the same thing so for now don't worry about that we're going to add some color or some light i should say on the trees in the front later so just worry about kind of roughly mapping out the trees in the back for now and for the trees in the back since they're further away and they're kind of bigger i like to really draw this traditional um almost like christmas tree <laughs> shape so still the same technique first mapping out where the trees are going to be with vertical lines and then going in with this super traditional christmas tree shape And once you have your outline, making sure that it is also fill in at the bottom, you can go ahead and actually hide the front trees. It's going to be very helpful to make sure that everything is actually close and get a better feel for what you've drawn. And then you can just fill in all the different shapes by dragging your color like we did before and maybe adjusting the threshold and closing some holes in the outlines here and there. And although these silhouettes really don't need to be super precise and fancy or anything, feel free to go back and tweak the shapes, adding some extra branches or making the ends a little bit ends <laughs> the ends a little bit more pointy. So everything you want to do here, by all means, please go ahead and do it. But also, if you don't want to worry about it, that's totally okay. This is really the background of the background, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Once you have your background trees, we're going to reactivate the front trees. And as you can see, you can't barely see them. <laughs> so we're going to add some highlights on them because we can imagine that the fire here is kind of going to obviously light up the trees. So you're going to activate alpha lock on this tree layer. Again, just swiping with two fingers towards the right or manually activate it in the menu. And here for the color, what we're going to do is we're going to pick the light gray blue version of the color <laughs> so the the lowest one on the left of the color palette otherwise you just make your tree color even lighter you just brush towards the middle part of your illustration and then use the smudge tool to blend in the edges to create some sort of a gradient so the light here like i was saying you want to focus it on the middle of the illustration because that's where the fire is going to be and that way you're just going to bring back your trees and add a little bit of uh, depth in your illustration. We're also going to add some lights toward the middle of the grass, so activating alpha lock on the grass layer and then using the same color to roughly add some light and then smudging it in so that it actually looks good and not just like a big, <laughs> big random splotch in the middle. So at this point, we've done most of the basic background. We're going to make it look good because right now it's quite boring. So we're going to start by adding some stars in the sky. So for that, create a new layer above the circle layer and rename it to stars. Now you could draw it directly on the circle, but I like to draw them on separate layers so that we can move them around very easily. And you're going to use the same color as you use for the background around the circle. So this kind of super, super light blue. Same brush again. You can also draw a moon if you want. You can draw a circle for the moon or you can draw a crescent shape. Anything you want here at this point is totally, totally acceptable. Of course, you're the master of your own creations. Um, <laughs> guys, uh, just to let you know, I'm filming this and it's almost midnight. So I'm going to be starting to say crazy things like you're the master of your own creation. Um, 
but yeah, obviously <laughs> you get to pick whatever you draw in your own illustrations. If you're drawing a moon though, I recommend you draw it roughly in the middle of the piece or the middle of the sky so that it aligns really nicely with the tent, otherwise it's going to kind of make the composition all, all weird. And if there's anything you need to move, you can always use the selection tool, I'm going to show it to you slower, selection tool here at the top, setting it to freehand, making sure that the color fill option is deactivated, and just drawing a section around a star or the moon or something. And then you're going to be able to use the arrow tool to either resize it, rotate it, or put it somewhere else. So here you can draw kind of as many stars as you want and you can also go in and add little dashed lines like this if you want to create this illusion, well not illusion, but if you want to make it look like there are constellations. So here I didn't draw real constellations, I'm just drawing whatever, but I think this is a nice little detail and make it feel a lot more like an illustration, you know, because obviously <laughs> in the sky you don't see the lines between the constellations, you just have to have them in your, your own head, but whatever. I'm gonna stop talking now. Well, actually not, I'm not gonna stop talking because I need to tell you how to add the reflection of the stars on the water. So for that, you can just swipe your stars layer towards the left to duplicate it. Then you go to drag your layer above everything. So it's going to be the first layer in the group. And then if you use the arrow tool, you're going to have the option to flip vertically. So flipping vertically is going to allow you to kind of see the stars as mirrored, which is what you would see in the lake or the water. And then you can just move them around so that actually are above the lake and not just in the sky. You can also kind of, um, I guess, squish them. So if you set your arrow tool to distort, you're going to be able to use one of the handles to squish them so that they look a little bit kind of, uh, I don't know how to explain it. But since they're, they're projected or reflected in the water, they're kind of condensed a little bit more. So you can do it that way. That means so you're going to get a bit of a hole towards the bottom part of the lake, so you might want to add some extra stars there. So that's pretty cool, but they look a little bit too intense. So you might want to click on the little N next to the check mark to be able to lower the opacity quite a lot so that they look more like reflection and not just brand new stars in the water. And you might also want to add a little bit of blur. So using the motion blur from the adjustment panel, uh, setting it to the entire layer, and then you can use your finger and swiping it towards the right to add more blur or towards the left to lessen the blur. And yeah, this way you're going to add just a tiny, tiny little bit of movement so that it looks like the reflection is on the water and the water is moving. So super subtle, but just a nice little, um, nice little touch and to add more movement also we're going to add some waves so go ahead and create a new layer above the star so this one's going to be the first layer now this one is also going to be a clipping mask and we're going to rename it to waves not wares waves i don't know how you pronounce that wares wares whatever anyway <laughs> waves and here i personally like to just draw some random squirrels, something like this with a very small pencil i think it looks super super good and you might want to change the blending mode of this layer, so clicking on the little N again and picking color dodge. Now, this is a very subtle effect, whoops, <laughs> but it does make the wave look a little bit brighter and a little bit more like, I don't know, magical in a way. And you can play with opacity until you find some sort of blending that you like. And with that, we're going to be ready to add the tent. So go ahead and create a new layer above everything, rename it to tent. And this one doesn't need to be a clipping mask because the tent is not going to go past a circle anyway. And in terms of color here, I like to pick the color that is going to be the complementary color to my blue. So in this case, it's going to be this yellow. And that way we just know that we're going to get a lot of contrast. And if you're working with your own colors, you can go ahead and color pick one color from the water, it doesn't really matter. And then you're going to go in the harmony part of your color wheel, set it to complementary and take the color that it suggests. You can then make it brighter, more saturated. So it's probably going to be an orange or a yellow, depending on the kind of blue or green that you used. And once you have your color, we're going to stick with the same brush. We're pretty much drawing everything with this brush. And you're going to start with just a very simple triangle like this, then a slightly curved line on the top, and then you just connect everything to create your tent shape. 
Here you can also just fill it in, making sure that you adjust your threshold as necessary. And if you're not super happy with your tent shape, don't worry about it. You can always use the arrow tool at the top, setting it to distort. I'm getting ahead of myself. And then using the arrows or the handles, I should say, to kind of change the shape a little bit. So something super simple like this. And you're going to activate alpha lock on the tent layer as well so we can add some details and you're going to make your yellow or orange even lighter and you're going to color the kind of front part of the tent so the front triangle because it's facing the the fire and you can go in with a super super bright version of your tent color to add even more lights and highlights on the different um angles not angles the different edges of the tent to really make them pop even more you can also draw a little line in the middle of the front to draw some sort of an opening. But honestly, you don't really need to be super precise with this tent because when we zoom out, we barely see anything anyway. You can also deactivate alpha lock to go ahead and add some little uh, strings, I guess. So kind of starting from either the top or the middle part of your sides, edges, <laughs> and just drawing these curved little strings like this with the same bright color you used for the highlight. It's a tiny detail, but it helps ground a tent, quite literally, actually. <laughs> and we're almost ready to add the fire and the animation, but before that, we need to group all of our layers for the background. So for that, you just swipe them towards the right with one finger, then click group, and you're going to be allowed to collapse the group and rename it to background. Oh, and I forgot something. We need the reflection of the tent in the water. Okay, go back and open your background group by clicking on the little arrow and then you're going to duplicate your tent layer and just like we did for the stars we're going to vertically flip the layer so just like this and then you're going to place it over the lake obviously quite close to the shore is it a shore for a lake i'm not sure anyway you're also going to use the motion blur here it might be a little bit more strong than what you did for the stars and you can also distort your tent so that it looks a little bit more flat now one little thing we can do here is add some movement in the tent. So for that going in the adjustment panel, you can pick liquify, which is at the bottom and then set your liquify tool to push. The size doesn't matter. Well, it does, it does matter, but you're going to need to find it yourself and kind of do a few tests. And then you can just brush over very quickly, kind of in a zigzag motion over your tent. And this is going to drag the color around and make it look like the tent reflection is in waves. Once that is done, don't forget to lower the opacity of your tent layer so that the reflection is not super intense. And that's pretty much it. So we're going to be ready to add the fire and the animation. So there's one very, very important thing to know that is going to, if you don't do it, completely mess up your animation. So this background group needs to be right above the background color layer. If there's another one between them, it is not going to work. So make sure that you place your background group right above your background color. And we're going to open up animation assist. So to do that, go in the red icon menu here at the top. In the canvas section of the panel, you're going to have animation assist. And this is going to open up this menu here at the bottom. And what Procreate does from there is it takes every group and every single layer that are not in groups and create frames from there. And frames, think of them as pages of a flipbook. So Procreate is going to essentially flip through your layers and that's what's going to create an animation. So for now, we should just have the background group. So we have just one frame at the bottom, but if I went and uh, activate my example here, you could see that it adds a frame. So for now, we're just going to set our background as the background. So we're just clicking on the frame and clicking background here. That way it doesn't move. Otherwise, it's going to become a frame that is going to just alternate with the other ones and we're not going to have a background. It's going to be a mess. Once that is done, go ahead and create a new layer. And as you can see, it also creates a new frame in the animation assist and we're going to draw the fire with a super 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 bright yellow and the same brush just kind of a like a teardrop shape like this super simple you can also draw the reflection of the fire in the water so just something super rough and kind of a, a blob i guess um, and you can also use your smudge tool to just blend in it a little bit i don't use the liquify here i don't feel like it's necessary but you just want to have some sort of a, a fire reflection in the water and once that is done, you can rename this uh, layer to fire. <laughs> We're also going to create some sort of a glow around the fire. So create a new layer. This one, rename it to glow, I think. There we go. Yep. Yeah. 
<laughs> and we're going to draw with the same brush and the same color just a random circle i guess or a blob shape around the fire it really does need to be precise because we are going to go in the adjustment panel here at the top selecting gaussian blur and for the entire layer and then if you move your finger towards the right it's going to activate or uh, add more blur and if you move it back towards the left it's going to lessen the blur so find a blur that you like and then you just click out and if we play it right now we see that we have the fire and the glow that are flickering which is not what we want so we're going to create a group with both the fire and the glow and rename this group to fire one that way the fire and the glow are going to be in one frame together since they are in one group together so now if we play we don't have any animation because the background is set as the background and then that means we only have one moving frame which is the fire but it's not moving yet so we're going to duplicate this fire group and we're going to rename this one to fire two so that way we now have two moving frames we have fire one and fire two so procreate is going to be alternating between fire one and fire two but right now these two fires are the exact same so you're going to open up fire 2 and on your fire layer you're slightly going to change the shape of your fire so i like to make my mine just a little bit pointier at the top really you don't want a big difference here just a slight slight, slight little difference and you can pick the glow layer as well and maybe changing the size a little bit with the arrow tool and um yeah just changing it so it's slightly different uh, but you, again, you don't want it to be crazy, crazy different. And you might want to change a little bit of the fire reflection in the water as well so that everything moves a little, little bit. And now if we click on play, well, this is really fast, but we're going to change it later. You can see that there is a difference and there is some sort of a rough animation happening. So you could keep it at two frames. I like to have at least three in my animations. So just duplicating fire two and this one, you're going to rename this new group to fire three. <laughs> I know quite original, huh? Um, so yeah, just fire three and you're going to do the same thing. So you're going to slightly change the fire shape. I like to just erase a little part of this point here so that there is kind of a, I guess, is it a spark? No, it's not a spark, a little fire. Thing. <laughs> just a little drop of fire at the top like it's kind of floating away and uh yeah i mean you can really do whatever you want with your shape here it's such a small element that it doesn't need to be precise we just want to know that something is slightly different so that we actually have an animation you're also going to slightly change the reflection and the glow just like we did before and that's pretty much all we have to do in terms of creating different frames you could go ahead and create five six seven eight nine ten how many fire frames as you want i'm going to stop at three because i feel like that's enough and if we play we see that we have a crazy fast animation for now so we're going to change the settings a little bit so just clicking on settings here on the right and you're going to see at the top three options loop ping pong and one shot these are just the order in which the animation is going to play so feel free to pick whichever one you like i'm going to stick with loop for now just don't pick one shot because that plays the animation once and that's not necessarily what we want now on the skin frame and on the skin opacity it's just kind of a the display it, it doesn't affect the final result it's just kind of what we are going to see when we work on animations so for that just don't worry about it and frame per second is I, I don't like saying that because it's an oversimplification but for this purpose just think of it as the speed of the animation so you can set it to whatever you want I'm gonna set it at three that way it feels like the fire is flickering but not too crazy fast so there's one more thing we need to consider if you want to export your illustration or animation I should say for Instagram you need to have a video that is at least three seconds long now in order to figure out how many frames you need in order to have a three second long animation all you need to do is take the length of the animation you want so three seconds and multiply that by the frame per second rate that you selected so in my case three so that means three times three nine frames so, so just duplicate your fire groups until you have the right amount of frames and then reorganize them so that animation goes through properly so if i one two three one two three one two three etc until you have enough frames and once you're ready to export you can go in the wrench icon menu select share at the top and then animated it before at the bottom make sure that the frame per second that is set in this menu is the same as you use in the settings and then you can just click on export at the top
you're then going to be able to click save video and that's going to save this new animation on your camera roll as a video so where your regular pictures and videos are on your ipad that's where this animation is going to be and you're going to be ready to post it to instagram facebook or whatever you want and if you want to learn how to create more simple animations like this in Procreate, I highly recommend you check out this playlist in which I'm going to teach you exactly that. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.